Welcome to E-Commerce Insiders, A Journey to Success, where we dive deep into the heart of e-commerce, uncovering the secrets behind successful online stores and the entrepreneurs who run them. Hosted by Chris Morano, each episode includes insights, strategies, and inspirational stories designed to guide e-commerce store owners on their journey to building remarkable brands. Whether you're starting up or scaling up, we're here to light the way, sharing the experiences of those who have made their mark. Let's get ready to build your dream brand together. Welcome back to E-Commerce Insiders, a journey to success, where we peel back the layers of e-commerce success stories to give you the insights you need to elevate your brand. Today, we're thrilled to have Eric Helm, a visionary entrepreneur whose knack for spotting opportunities has led him to create Reconvert.io, a powerhouse suite on the Shopify app store now serving countless brands worldwide. From his early days of navigating the world of drop shipping to revolutionizing post-purchase customer experiences, Eric's journey is a testament to innovation, persistence, and the relentless pursuit of growth. Join us as we dive into the strategies that have revolutionized and transformed a simple idea into a thriving e-commerce solution and discover how you too can leverage technology to skyrocket your brand's success. Let's get into the interview. Today, we're excited to have Eric Kame, the founder of Reconvert, a company that's a suite of Shopify apps powering over 40,000 brands worldwide. Eric has a passion for innovation, keen eye for business opportunities, and we're super excited to have him on today's show. So it's a pleasure to have you on today, Eric. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. I'm, I'm excited about this. Great. Well, first off, you know, as we had mentioned, this is really focused on e-commerce. So what I want to get into is kind of some questions about who you are and your background in the world of e-commerce and Shopify. All right, cool. So I, I started, it's almost almost 10 years ago. It's about nine years ago. I just got out of the Israeli army and I was kind of looking for something to do with myself. I My English level wasn't as good as it is right now. And I knew nothing about computers in general or business in general. Um, but a good friend of mine, he heard about this thing called dropshipping and he said, uh, you know, there's this cool platform called Shopify. Let's try and, and run our own store. So uh, we really decided to drop everything and we moved uh, from Tel Aviv back in the day to Beersheba, which is kind of south part of Israel, uh, just to be remote, to have no distractions, uh, you know, friends and everything. So we can really focus on building the business from scratch. And we really didn't have a lot of knowledge back in the day. Um, and yeah, w at the beginning, we started as a very, I mean, I can talk about that, but we had a few pivots uh, between different types of e-commerce stores. Uh, eventually, we managed after a few years, it, it's been a struggle, but we managed to scale it up to about a million dollars in monthly revenue. And eventually, uh, I decided to exit that business and open my own kind of uh, SaaS product. Sure. Following what I love doing. That's awesome. Let me ask before we get into the SaaS product, because I, I, I want to talk about that because I know the value it brings um, and I'm sure you do as well. But let's go over a little bit about the scaling to a million for your previous store before the exit. So I guess first question would be what type of um, products were you selling? Was it drop shipping or direct to consumer? So it was... At the beginning, um, it was a, a classic dropshipping store, but the model, um, the business model was a little bit different uh, from the classic, I don't know, AliExpress type of dropshipping. Sure. Um, we took a course from two guys that we knew back in the day um, about they were selling sex toys and they were only advertising on Google. Um, so we tried doing something similar. They recommended contacting um, manufacturers within the U.S. and try selling to the U.S., um, so we did some niche research. Eventually, we decided to go with the uh, MMA and boxing equipment. So okay. we started con contacting all the major brands, Tidal Boxing, Ringside. Um, I don't remember the names anymore, but we had sure. a bunch of them. Uh, so we did get a, some sort of a reseller agreement from there. The, they did give us a nice discounts to start dropshipping. They did allow it, which was nice. But uh, we started having a lot of other major issues around uh, managing stock because they didn't have some sort of an integration, an API integration or anything like that that helped us really 
understand the quantities. So the, the products were, were good. They, they were, mm-hmm. I mean, branded products uh, that are well familiar within the, the community of uh, trainers in, in that field of MMA and boxing. But um, we, we couldn't track stock and you have thousands of variants for each each type right. of product. You have, like if you have boxing gloves, you have sizes and you have colors and you have all of that. And it was impossible to track stock. And we started having a lot of these orders where um, you're just getting the product, but uh, I mean, you get the order, but it's out of stock. And then you start realizing that people actually found it in your store because they were looking for it on another store. They couldn't find it and then they order from you, but you don't really have it on stock. Um, so that was kind of one of the struggles. Um, another kind of big issue that we had is we couldn't hack the marketing side of thing. Uh, we, we mm-hmm. did focus on Google. We did a lot of great work there. I think it, it taught us a, a lot about the, um, Google ads and Google shopping and a bunch of other things. The issue there, I mean, there, there were a few things that we didn't understand back in the day. Once we realized them, it kind of helped us move in the right direction. But that's kind of how we started. All right. Now, what year was this? I think uh, I think 2015, 15 or 14, somewhere okay. in between. So before yeah. pre-COVID manufacturing and shipping issues. Yeah, I mean, th- these issues were always there. Uh, sure. We didn't experience them for sure because we didn't have to do anything with China back in the day. Yeah. Uh, only I think around 2017 or 18, we started uh, doing this. No, maybe a little bit earlier. I'm not sure about the timeline exactly, yeah. to be honest. So you mentioned the marketing side of it. Were you guys finding that Google was really the number one, you know, platform for you guys on a direct-to-consumer searching for a specific type of boxing glove, training shorts, shoes, whatever that was? Uh, so we started with the assumption that Google is the most stable platform because it's mm-hmm. it's based on intent and based on search. And if you find winners there, it's just going to stay steady and, you know, throughout the entire year. Uh, as opposed to Facebook, where back in the day, uh, I mean, still today, the ad fatigue is a real factor. Like people watch your ad once or twice, and then it's just getting not as effective as it used to be. Uh, so right. we did use Facebook for retargeting and make sure, that, I mean, to increase conversions on, on kind of... Um, the higher part of the funnel, sure. um, but Google was a little bit um, more robust. What we didn't realize, and that was kind of one of the biggest pain points, is we took these scores from guys that sold, used to sell sex toys. And mm-hmm. if you're selling sex toys, you're not allowed to advertise anywhere else other than Google. So they had tons of traffic because everything were, was going through there. And we didn't realize why we can't hit these numbers. We just, we never got to the numbers of traffic that they used to get. Um, so we struggled. We struggled for a long time. Uh, we also have very poor profit margins because we didn't really we we didn't have anything to compare to. It was our first store, uh, but we really wanted like we, we wanted to go all in. So we just kept trying. Um, we, we struggled for a long time. Yeah, yeah. Around that. Yeah, it's definitely a challenge. Always the Google versus Facebook conversation. Um, and then, of course, different industries on Google and Facebook and TikTok now, you know, you can't advertise and, you know, CBD companies reach out to us all the time. And, you know, we just can't do anything other than search engine optimization for now. Um, before we get into reconvert, so you went from the Israeli army to this isolated area to work on this business. What was the thought process behind you know, starting your own business and then transitioning now again to starting your SaaS business? So um, I think back in the day, we were, me and my previous partner, uh, we were pretty young. Um, we just, we were looking for, we really wanted to just push forward, you know, on our lives as, as a young entrepreneur, you just want to find something to do. We didn't think too much, but if we just look at the business model of drop shipping, it's just very comfortable. Everything is happening online. You can work from wherever you want. So actually we, we moved to uh, this city, Beersheba, and then actually, I, I didn't say that, but we moved to Krakow uh, in Poland for about six months. Uh, this is where the, the, the course creators that we took were there. So okay. really, uh, we, we uh, started you know hanging out with them and a bunch of other uh, e-commerce owners. So we learned a lot from being around them and you know, having the same mindset of just going all in, make it work somehow, uh, keep pushing all the time. So that's what started kind of um, this route. I'm sorry, I have tons of noise here. Um, And then, yeah, and then, I mean, once we really grew it, um, I was always looking into different technologies 
for our store to keep it, you know, ahead of the curve mm-hmm. and really help us, you know, e- eventually there's a lot of competition. And if everybody uh, use, uses the same platforms, eventually it's going to get crowded. And then, you know, right. the ROI going down and everything, everything is just working like this. So I used to always find these new small technologies and implement them to our business as soon as possible. So I was kind of a geek for apps right from the very get-go. Um, and uh, yeah, eventually, once once we really scale it up, eventually, so so the story of how we got this, we, we turned it upside down and make it successful. And this is, I think, a super important takeaway to anyone who's just starting out, or even if you are on, even if you have a lot of experience in e-commerce. I, I think whenever there is a new platform, whenever there is a new thing that is getting, I don't know, a new marketing platform of whatever sort is out, and it mm-hmm. has some sort of a pixel, it's super important that you'll implement it as soon as possible into your website. Even if you're not planning on advertising anytime soon, just have it there because the amount of data that you're gathering over it is, is just, it's gold, it's golden. For so sure. we, we were advertising on Google for I think two and a half years, nonstop optimizing, keep optimizing, can't get the goals. Can't, can't, I mean, we couldn't get the results we wanted. Mm-hmm. Um, there was one category in specific out of tens of thousands of SKUs we were managing that actually were profitable, uh, but we had to sell it very expensive because it was, I think it, we got it for like $50 and we sold it for like $70, again, very okay. thin margins with, um, and it was sauna suits by Tidal okay. Boxing, RDX, and a bunch of other of these brands. Um, but the, the Facebook pixel that we built got so strong, so we had so much data around it. Mm. So what we did, what we decided to, did, to do is we just pivoted to a new store uh, that is much leaner. Uh, we found a, a sauna vest on AliExpress that cost like, I don't know, $6. And then we started advertising it for like $90 to the same audience in a lookalike. Right. And suddenly, boom, everything explodes. And from there, I mean, the way up was much quicker. Everything started working out. Um, right. And, you know, from there to start managing the supply chain, starting managing uh, the manufacturing, uh, optimizing the, the quality of the product, starting actually building a brand around it, uh, warehouses and all that. But uh, that's for me, that was when I really decided to kind of go out because I, I really realized it's not something that I like doing. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I decided to switch it around. Uh, it, just another pivot again. For me, it's pretty much it, it felt a part of the same journey. Right. Um, You've reached a certain milestone and then determined it was time to shift gears and take your experience onto something else. Yeah. I mean, optimizing business, it's always around what, like what will take you to the next level personally. Um, Different people have different goals. My goal was a little bit different than my previous partner. So I decided to exit the business. Uh, He now owns the entire thing. And I just moved on to my, my next, uh, my next venture, which I'm, it's a company that I'm, I'm now building with my sister um, oh, we're very fantastic. happy about the way it's working out. Yeah. So well, then that's the perfect segue to reconvert. So why don't you give our listeners just a rundown of, of reconvert? I mean, cause I, I think there's a lot of value in just understanding the immense power that this tool has. So it, it all started, you know, um, if you're doing e-commerce, in in general, you get tons of ideas and tons of problems you're trying to solve every day. So back in the day, I started just writing down all the issues that I found uh, during my day to day operations. And um, we back in the day, we started using um, one click upsell by other mm-hmm. Firestone that back in the day was in a separate checkout. It wasn't working with the native Shopify checkout. Um, and it was great because we saw the uplift in AOV. If you build an upsell funnel that is defined the right way you can really optimize your profits in an insane way like 15 20 20 percent is ideal but anywhere between even five percent if you're a high volume it's insane yep um the revenue and the, the aov um so we use this app and we rem- i remember one specific case but it happened every once in a while if because we used it a separate checkout there were a lot of integration issues and i'm, I'm not blaming uh, ocu or ezra they're cool guys great product nothing against yeah. them uh, but back in the day when it was a separate checkout, uh, a lot of integration issues. For example, one time there was an issue with the shipping integration and for like six hours, uh, the checkout just didn't work. So we kept advertising on Facebook. I don't know how many thousands of dollars uh, went to the trash that day because just checkout didn't work. 
right. uh, and it's an external app. It's not even the Shopify checkout, so you can't really reach out to the Shopify support. Um, so that's that's when I decided, okay, well, first of all, we, we decided to stop using that app back in the day, and I decided that I'm going to build something similar, but for a native checkout. Uh, and back in the day, it was just the thank you page. It, it wasn't like this post-purchase page wasn't available. Uh, right now, today in Reconvert, just to give like a quick rundown of, of yeah. what Reconvert is. So Reconvert is basically an upsell funnel app for Shopify, strictly for Shopify. We are soon launching on Wix, but it's a different story. So it's um, uh, an upsell funnel builder for Shopify with adv advanced segmentation. So you can make sure that it's always the right fit for the right customer at the right time. Um, if you're on Shopify Plus, then it starts from the checkout. You can actually add uh, upsell widgets to the checkout. And then from there, um, after the customer completes the payment, uh, which is, by the way, why we decided to focus on post-purchase upsells as opposed to pre-purchase uh, upsells, once the customer completes the purchase and already paid you the money he owes you, only then you can display a set of two post-purchase offers. This is a new pages that you can add between the checkout and the thank you page. Uh, so these are pages that are otherwise just not do not exist. And right. then the customer can either accept or decline these offers. Uh, if he accepts them, is he's automatically getting charged with a single click and being redirected to the thank you page uh, without having to re-enter his payment details. And then on the thank you page, we also have an advanced editor with a bunch of different widgets. So most merchants use it. Um, not most, but a lot of merchants are using it strictly for upselling, but you can do a lot of other things with it. Um, from the thank you page, you know, eventually it's it's a page that by default is just kind of an exit door from the store on Shopify. Uh, and if you look at any other huge retailer out there, this page usually is packed with a lot of different offers and different opportunities for the customer to either give you more information about himself so you can better segment it and better off, I mean, make better offers or just resell right then and there. Wow. So yeah, so that's, that's the thing. I mean, I, I personally know about reconvert. So for our listeners who are either, you know, kind of figuring out how to increase, give them a breakdown about like the value of the AOV for those, you know, who are listening, who don't know average order value, the money spent on advertising as an agency owner, and Eric as somebody who owned an e commerce business now do doing reconvert, the amount of money we spend on ads is absolutely insane. So if we are basing our metrics off of um, certain margins, profit needs to remain at this level. By driving the same amount of traffic, you're able to increase your profit by X percent based on increasing your average order value. And I think a lot of people forget about how important that is for their businesses because it's like, hey, we're getting a ROAS of 3.5x on Facebook, Google's delivering at a 5.2, you know, and you kind of get accustomed to having these numbers as your baseline kind of success rate. But in increasing your AOV by a tool like reconvert, upsells, cross sells, even down sells you're able to increase those ROAS numbers without increasing your ad spend. Exactly. So if you look at it this way, it's actually a marketing hack in a way. It's not really. It's a CRO um, thing. It's it's all around AOV. But eventually, your ROI, your ROAS is going to get better wherever you advertise. Um, it's less. We, we actually have a CRO agency we work with. Um, they call prison fly and this guy told me like every time we're we're having a new client the first test we're running is with or without reconvert that usually paid pays for my salary for a year in advance so that's mm -hmm. and then i feel comfortable doing smaller tasks uh, that, that might be better or worse i'm not sure um but yeah definitely and and there is one thing that is even more important to understand i think when it comes to increasing your aov post purchase it's different because your you get your ROAS on your initial sale, and then from there, it's pure revenue. And this is, you can consider that as a whole new sale that you can make without the ad spend to take in consideration. So mm -hmm. the amount, the discount you can give can be bigger. Um, you don't need to calculate the ad spend into these upsells. You can make right. it more attractive. That's completely fine. And it's definitely boosting. Um, I mean, you can consider that together. For me, what I found back in the day when I was a merchant, I used to consider these, this part of the funnel as a whole new cell that I can 
take it i mean just make it more attractive for for customers right. uh, in terms of in terms of revenue you can see it really depends on the type of store what they're selling how they're advertising um what exactly what funnel exactly that they went through uh but you can see usually an up a, a boost in revenue extreme cases you can see 15 percent usually with one click you can get it to like two to three percent and after mm -hmm. some optimization you can get it to like five seven percent if you're doing well if you're really taking this seriously right. um then that's not a problem um, that's amazing yeah, that's exactly so give me a little background about grow and reconvert so we went from the e-commerce drop shipping you know into kind of a d to c format now to reconvert what did that timeline look like and what are some of the challenges you've experienced in growing reconvert i mean that was growing the the app business was for me much easier than it was growing the e-commerce business. I think, first of all, it was because I, I got a lot of experience until this point. Um, and I've seen what it's like to have a successful business running and working. And mm -hmm. um, second, you know, I started as a marketer and uh, most of the developers in the app store, at least back then, were developers and they didn't know much about marketing. So mm -hmm. um, I used pretty much all the growth hacks that I had back in the day um from running the e-commerce business on the app store and it was much easier back in the day of course um i mean some uh, aso app store optimization some ads um basic ads it wasn't back then it wasn't available on shopify but on google and facebook nobody used to advertise on these platforms reddit uh being a bunch of smaller long tail uh platforms that nobody used back in the day so it was highly profitable right um finding developers was hard at the beginning uh, we, we in the e-commerce store we we did have a, the one a single developer back in the day to kind of help us with some stuff, but we didn't. It wasn't the core to the business. It wasn't super important to us to make sure that the software he's writing, the code he's writing, is super professional and clean and all of that. Uh, once you're starting to build your own software business, it's a whole different story, and you need to know how to find good developers at affordable rates, um, because now you have a team of like eight developers and not I don't know two or three. So yeah. but we did start with two or three, but we were looking for an agency that can then e easily add more um, developers if needed. Um, we got featured by Shopify, I think, one week after we went live, and we got, I think, a thousand installs on the first month from there. We just keep kept building. Uh, we were focusing on customer support. Every waking hour for me was on the live chat, getting, I mean, providing the best support I can, asking for reviews. Uh, asking for feedback to get the product better and based on customer feedback it was so much easier to grow the product when we started we didn't we didn't even have an upsell product we just had a thank you page builder and no upsells nothing wow. to really increase revenue right. and the first thing because i knew it's it's more complex if you want to work with this api from shopify to get products and then you need to manage stocks and locations and currencies and a bunch of other stuff um so we decided to start without it of course everybody were asking for it and then we started building it the next thing people started asking for is everything around segmentation. You know, uh, I have this type of customer. I want to show him this. I want to only show it to repeating customers or old customers. And I want to, I don't know, based on specific product and all these types of segmentation. So we created this robust segmentation system um, that works pretty well. It's um, amazing. Yeah. Now, have you guys built any integrations? I know Shopify over the last handful of months kind of just um, acquired per se, or, or partnered with Clavio, um, which historically has been a remarkable for segmentation and building customer lists. Have you guys had any integrations yet in that space for email? So, yeah, I mean, we do have uh, integration with both Clavio, uh, OmniSend, MailChimp, and SMS Bump, um, but this is just for sending as we do collect customer birthdays on the thank you page which is another great example of what you can do with the thank you page there is zero risk if you do it on the thank you page you don't lose anything there is no chance he's going to give you his birthday but not make a purchase there is zero percent chance of that right. so we did create an integration between that widget and clavio and then you can easily create uh, a happy birthday flow on clavio uh, we have also training for that to set it up and all that because a lot of merchants are not sure how to set up uh, date-based campaigns uh, flows on Clavio. Yeah. So we have these integrations. We also have some integrations with uh, the popular reviews apps like Luke's, JudgeMe, uh, 
Stamp.io to just show, you know, star reviews below the product capsules. Um, and we have some recommendations. Like if you want to use, we do have an integration with the default Shopify uh, recommendation system. If you want to display uh, product recommendations based, based on the Shopify algorithm. But mm -hmm. if you want, if you have another app you use like Rebuy or Wiser or a bunch of these Recomatic. So we, we have an integration with those to display the products in our own widgets, but using the, um, the algorithm for the recommendations from these other apps. So that's also something you can do. And of course, you know, you can display specific products if that's, something you're up for right yeah that's um i mean it's like i said knowing personally that the tool itself that is remarkable how are you finding staying up to date with latest trends in technology so we all know there's new platforms coming out all the time there's new marketing ideas how are you guys finding the kind of fast-paced e-commerce environment for your business yeah, I think it's endless. Um, and I think from my experience, if you look at, at e-commerce, there are a few pillars that are, I mean, keeping your store alive. You have right. the support and the product. You have the marketing. Uh, you have um, the, the conversion rate optimization. So all of the things, um, you, you need to optimize around them. And you can use these technologies to always keep optimizing these things that you're doing. Like I am as a merchant back in the day, used right. to go to the app store almost on a daily basis just to see new apps that comes up. Because by the way, this is a great tip. If there is a new app that is cool with a new technology, you can actually reach out to them. There is a good chance they're going to grandfather you for life. We have right. still some apps that were like you're going to get forever the app for free just for giving them the feedback as a real merchant they're like they really they have thirst for that they really need this mm -hmm. so uh, and then you also ahead of everyone else so like you can do this as a merchant i'm doing the same as an app developer especially now with ai that is exploding all over the web um but but you need to stay realistic eventually um i i really want to take reconvert also to the next level and also have marketing on automation inside and you know include sms and email we do have another product for that that's a whole other story, okay. but you can use these different technologies in a way that, again, going to help you optimize either the product, the support, the marketing, and the uh, conversion optimization. So it must be around these areas, but you need to stay realistic. Eventually, um, there is so much you can do in so much time, and it's yeah. very easy to look around, you know, the girl in the red dress, and, oh, that's cool, let's try this, and then it's like you work a few months on this instead of focusing on the main product. Right. Um, so we try to bring it in nothing super critical we keep our eyes open and we add everything to the backlog pretty much that, that's fantastic yeah i think as an entrepreneur business owners it's easy to squirrel all the time and just these yeah. ideas come in and really focusing in you mentioned ai have you guys began the investigation into how ai can be better used in cro and product recommendations so yeah of course we, we've been doing that actually for a long time, uh, we've been working on integration. So before even this entire boom started, yeah. uh, there is there was a new AI um, product, an API by Amazon called um, uh, Amazon Optimize, I think, mm -hmm. uh, which basically allows you to integrate with their recommendations API, uh, which is a super powerful AI. And we are working on having this algorithm as a part of the app. So you're going to be able to use Amazon recommendations on your own store. Uh, so that's was one of the things we were trying. Um, Business-wise, I we took a day, almost even more than a day, for the entire company to stop everything and find out how can AI power their own work. And we mm -hmm. found amazing tools for the development team, for the content team. Of course, there's like it's endless. Uh, the support team, everything that we do now, we try to think, we, we try to find the, the latest tools we can implement uh, to the product. I mean, the easiest thing to do just, you know, to look like everyone is just to add this magic button that's generate text. But I think it's kind of empty. I think uh, everybody can go to ChatGPT and do it on their own. Yeah. I'm trying to find, we are trying to find ways to do it in a way that is really more impactful for mm. merchants. Um, so... Also, if you look around A-B testing and the way to optimize uh, different tests, I think if you set up a way for tests to be automatically tested, um, look for statistical significant and stop on their own and automatically recognize the next test and test it on its own, there is tons of value to it. 
uh, if you look at the right offer, the right discount, the right product, keep optimizing it all the time without the merchants have to do anything. I think that's way more impactful than just, yeah. I don't know, generating a random text line. I think yeah, it's yeah. just more powerful. For sure. Now, yeah. for, for our listeners and viewers, um, who is like the ideal store for reconvert? We are trying all the time to build it as a product that is a good fit for all stores. And as a general rule of thumb, we don't want to take any revenue if we don't generate at least 10x return on it. So okay. the, we have a very generous um, base plan for base stores. If you're on a development store, it's free. You can play with it for as long as you want. As long as you don't upgrade to a paid plan, then it's not an mm -hmm. issue. Uh, and then it goes from $5 a month for stores with less than uh, 50 orders per month. And it goes all the way up to $800 a month, but it really depends on the scale. Um, right. In terms of features, I, I, we made it so simple. And this is something I think that we really focused on at the beginning. We, we have a feature called Magic Designer. Uh, so we automatically sync it to your theme, make sure that the design looks exactly like your own theme. Uh, we will do all the, the, the language settings. So if you have a Japanese store, it's automatically going to be in Japanese. So everything wow. is going to be. And uh, so we created the pre-built funnel that you can, the, the only thing that you need to do if you want to just get started in a single click and have a whole funnel, post-purchase, two post-purchase offers, upsells, downsells, and a whole optimized thank you page in your own language and design. The only thing you need to do is just pick your maximum discount and we're going to do the rest. We're going to spread the discount across the funnel to make sure that you don't over give or just, right. you know, you want to start with a smaller thing and then increase it as they go if they didn't optimize for if they didn't opt for the uh, offer. So if you just do that, you can get started. So we understand that it's also important for busy merchants or just merchants that don't want to mess with that. You just want to get the additional thing. And mm -hmm. if you do want to customize everything and you do want to go to more advanced settings, um, also some stores have, you know, multi-location, multi-currency, um, right. um, multi-language and all that. We have the settings for that. You can do that. It's not a problem. Uh, so we really try to build it for everyone. I think the ideal store would be a store that want to increase their conversion rate and, uh, and AOV, but the yeah. average ROI is well over 4,000%, which is something we're really proud of. That's amazing. I mean, those metrics are huge. I mean, they're yeah. so important, especially for growing stores. Um, so you, you've described AOV, how you guys build out the funnel. Um, what would your elevator pitch be to somebody listening or watching this to say, you know, is there a 30 day trial? Is there, you know, you said $5 for anything under 50. I mean, that's a low price point. So the barrier to entry shouldn't be challenging to anybody, but what would your elevator pitch be to get someone to sign up and at least give it a try on their Shopify store? I have the same thing for everyone uh first of all we do have a 30 day free trial but if i only have the elevator time then yeah um i, I will ask someone if he's doing anything for their post purchase experience um post purchase page and thank you page if not i really don't care if they use reconvert or another tool but they mm. must use this it's not doing that it's just dumb i don't mind go with my competitors that's fine there's <laughs> plenty of room for everyone but as a merchant who's looked to uh, who's looking to another merchant in the eyes, if you're not optimizing this, you're just leaving money on the table, and mm. your chances to just be so much more successful are getting lost. Okay, yeah. and then you know, of course, if you are 30 days, if you didn't generate enough revenue during the 30 days, usually one day is enough to see the results. If you have, let's say, more than 500 orders per month, one day you're gonna see that it's working. Uh, eventually, it's it's a numbers game. You need to have a certain amount of orders. Uh, if not, then, I mean, you just need to wait until you do have some orders right. uh, because you have eventually conversion rate over the conversion rate. You have conversion rate for orders, and then out of the orders that coming through, you have conversion rate for the offers. So it's like right. maybe 2 or 3%, 5% of orders are going to be converted. So don't wait for 10 orders that are not converted and wait for it. Yeah. Uh, and other than that, you know, if, if the ROI is not there, just reach out to us. We're going to do something about it. There's 0% reason, 0% chance that this app is not going to be profitable for any merchant. That's fantastic. Yeah. So we're nearing the end of today's episode. Where can people find more information about you? Um, obviously in the Shopify app store. Um, give us the rundown where people can find you. We'll also leave a link in the show notes in the description. Um, 
So first of all, you can always uh, go to reconvert.io. We also prepared for our listeners uh, a very nice CRO book um, based on uh, with 35 tips uh, related to uh, conversion rate optimization. Just go to reconvert.io slash CRO um, and check it out. It's very nice. Uh, on the App Store, you can just search for either reconvert or upsell. Both ways are going to come up first. Uh, and yeah, I think that's it. I, I, we also have a YouTube channel with tons of tutorials. Uh, most of them are around reconvert and post-purchase optimization, but there is a lot of information for e-commerce merchants in general. We try to help all of them. Uh, we also just started a new journey of opening a Shopify store and documenting the entire process to show people how to start from scratch, uh, which I think can also be very interesting for some of the listeners. Um, Definitely. Yeah. That's fantastic. Um, everybody make sure to check out reconvert.io. Go to your Shopify app store. Give it a try. Um, the link will be in the description and the show notes. Uh, Eric, do you have anything else you want to finish off for our listeners today? Um, I just want to say, first of all, thank you for having me on the show. I really had a good time and uh, I appreciate listening. Uh, and I apologize for all the noises and stuff working You know, from here. Um, just moved to another location. And yeah, I would like to also hook everyone who's listening to this uh, podcast with a 10% lifetime discount. Um, we can do this in the description. Up to you. Just let me know. That's awesome. Well, thank you very much for that offer. I hope that everyone listening and watching um, definitely signs up for reconvert as an agency owner who works with multiple e-commerce brands and own some myself. Um, I'm very familiar in, in the values there, especially with the increase in cost of advertising on Google and Facebook. It's trying to pinch every penny out of your margins and this tool will absolutely do that. So Eric, I want to thank you again for coming on today's show. I think the value is amazing um in the tool like i said is fantastic thank you all right thank you so much take care we'll see you guys in the next episode